When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. If by accident you spilled some acid or base in lab or maybe outside somewhere, what could you do to try to minimize the risk for you and for people around you? Well, you could use a neutralization reaction because if you use a neutralization reaction, the actual products, so the water and the salt, are relatively harmless. So what here you can have you have a picture of a person who is who might have spilled acid or base, and then he goes for a certain procedure to neutralize it. So for example, if he increased the amount of acid somewhere by spilling it, then he would find a suitable base, also increase the level of the base, and by doing so, it would equal each other out, and then we have salt and water being formed, and everything is okay again. Obviously, the only problem is that it's a exothermic reaction, which means that there's going to be heat being released, so we just need to be careful with people being close by because there's going to be quite a bit of heat being produced, maybe making sure that we use the correct procedure to minimize the risk of, of boils and, and that kind of damage to you as well. So that is just the gist of the neutralization reaction, and we will use those kind of neutralization reactions both in the lab when we spill something or outside. So in this case, there might have been maybe a truck with acid in it that might have delivered it for some reason. I couldn't think of a reason why maybe for acids for industrial use, the car with the truck was transporting it and had an accident, and then you had to bring in the brigade to make sure that that the spill itself was, was not going to be too harmful, that there was not going to be any major problem. And they would have used a similar procedure to what you use in a lab, just maybe a bit more sophistication, a bit more safety, because you know obviously those acids might be quite, and those bases might be quite concentrated, which means if you don't take any safety precautions, you might burn yourself in the process because of that exothermic nature of neutralization reactions. Right, so this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this top point, which says... Analyze information from secondary sources to assess the use of neutralization reactions as a safety measure or to minimize damage in accidents or chemical spills. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what you would do in a lab and what you would do if there's a major spill maybe somewhere on the street or somewhere else. What kind of precaution, how you could use a neutralization reaction to minimize the problem that came about because of that spill. The first example we're going to talk about is what happens in the lab. So you can see this might be your average school lab. And there's a couple of steps that you should do and that, should, that, should you, that you should take to make sure that there's not too many problems when you do have a spill. The very first part is that you should use only dilute acids or bases when it comes to experimental things in class. There's no real reason to use concentrated bases or acids. And remember, if you if you were to use a concentrated acid or base, first of all, that could obviously burn you quite hardly, quite harshly, um, when it, you come in contact with it. But another problem is if it's concentrated and you try to neutralize it, that means it would would produce lots of heat. So you could boil yourself, you could burn yourself, boil yourself, you could burn yourself really quickly as well. In that case, you want to make sure. Generally, if you do experiments, just use dilute acids. So even if you do have a spill, the problem that caused is caused by it wouldn't be that problematic. Right? So don't use concentrated acids or bases. You should also, if there was a spill, so this is this happens, the second step is if there was a spill somewhere, make sure to remove all students from the lab. So you yourself, you yourself should be removed from the lab and everyone except for the teacher. In some cases, probably the teacher itself will, will leave as well. Maybe wait for someone else to come and help out. So remove all students from lab because if you come in contact with the acid or the base, you can harm yourself, and if you try to neutralize it and there's too many people around, again, you, someone could burn themselves. So remove all students from the lab. And the next step is interesting. Next step is to use sand to prevent acid or base from moving away. Right. So if you have a spill, problem with a spill, you know, it moves around, so it might creep into places that it's not meant to creep. If we just have sand somewhere, which I'm guessing schools might have, then the sand could be placed on it and thereby preventing it from moving away. 
problem is now the sand itself is actually acidic. So the sand will be acidic, but at least the actual acid substance won't be moving. It'll be stationary. Once that happens, once we have the sand on it, what we do then is we either use a dilute base if we have an acid spill, or we use a dilute acid if we have a base spill, and that we do that to neutralize it, to remove any acid and base and to make it neutral. And so in this case, we have Na2CO3, which is actually, this is amphiophrotic. That means it is, can actually act both as a base or as an acid. And in this case, we're going to come in contact with an acid. So here there was an acid spill. So this was spilled, an acid spill. We're going to use this amphiophrotic species here. We're going to neutralize it. And then we're going to have salt being produced. This is our salt. And we're going to have water being produced, and we're going to have carbon dioxide. None of those products are dangerous. But remember, the only problem is that this, it's also going to be, delta H is going to be negative, which means it's going to be exothermic, it's going to release energy, and we will make sure to be far away in safety equipment, we're going to have safety glasses on, everything else, just to make sure that you, when you do neutralize the, the acid, that there's no burns that result out of it. Right? So that's the procedure when there's a spill in a lab. And overall, whenever you, for example, deal with acids and bases, you should be using, especially when you're doing neutralization reactions, you should be using your goggles. Obviously, first of all, you want to make sure that nothing gets into your eyes. But also, if you do a neutralization reaction, since there is a bit of heat being removed, if you have glasses on, there's less risk of eye damage, for example, that that heat might cause. Now, that was the first one, so what happens in the labs. And the second one is what happens if you have it on a larger scale. So if there's an acid spill on a larger scale. So this might happen again if there's a truck which, which you know, was carrying acid and then crashed somewhere or was carrying bases and crashed somewhere. Or maybe in the industry area somewhere, in the factory, you might have had a big spill. What you would use, so the things you would use, you would use a dilute acid if there was a base that was spilled. You would use a dilute base if there was acid being spilled. Or if you want to keep it simple, you just use a amphiophrotic substance, such as the one we had beforehand, because that can deal with both acids or bases. So no matter what was spilled, we can use that substance. And what we do next is after we've decided which which we're, what we're going to use to neutralize the spill, we are going to remove all of the people close by. And this could be depending on how big the spill is. This could be a you know maybe even a bigger area, depending on how massive the spill was. You want to make sure that no one comes in contact with the acid or with the um, potential of neutralization reaction causing problems. And same with the first step, we're going to use our sand to make sure to collect the acid base. We, we will not neutralize it on the spot, right? I mean, there might have been so much acid and, or base being spilled that if you were to neutralize it on the spot, it might just be really dangerous. So what you're going to do, you might have a container you are going to collect all that sand, which has its acid or base in it. And those containers will then be carried somewhere safe. So here we have our container that has sand in it. And sand itself might have these acid particles, if it's acid spill, base particles, if it's a base spill. And once we've collected it, we are going to move that sand container to a safe area. Remember, I mean, there could have been so much acid or base being spilled that if you do it in a neighborhood, it might just be dangerous. So this, now we're going to move it to a safe area where there's nothing around. And once we do that, we are going to start a neutralization reaction. And we'll do so by adding plenty of water right, to make it dilute. We want to make it dilute so that the reaction itself is less dangerous. If it were concentrated, there would be more energy being released. So we're going to add water to make it dilute. And we're also going to add, our, in this case, I just use the same amphiothrotic species. And that will be added, in this case, it was hydrochloric acid. It could be sodium hydroxide as well if we were a base. But here we add our amphiothrotic. I like saying amphiothrotic, but I probably can't say it proper. I'll probably say it differently, and I don't, I don't really know exactly how, how to say it. But I'll just keep saying amphiothrotic. Um, we add our amphiothrotic species and our acid together, and then we neutralize it. We have our NaCl being formed, sodium chloride, our salt, again, not dangerous, water being formed, and carbon dioxide being formed. Only danger is that it's the actual delta H is negative, which means it's exothermic. 
but since we have added plenty of water, that means it's going to be quite dilute. So it's overall not going to be a massive danger to us. All right, so the dot point says assess the use of neutralization reactions as a safety measure or to minimize damage from accidents or chemical spills. So what I just described is two scenarios. We had a spill in a school lab or a spill on a later larger scale somewhere outside. And in both cases, we can use a neutralization reaction to remove the acid. That means people won't get burned. And you know, we have the, the products themselves from that neutralization reaction are completely harmless. NaCl, H2O, or carbon dioxide. But again, the one thing you should remember to also mention if there's a question like that is we got to make sure to make it dilute as possible, as dilute as possible when we do neutralization reactions, because whilst the products are harmless, the energy that does get released could cause damage if it's very concentrated, if it's in a very concentrated form. So we still have to be careful of our neutralization reactions. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.